Hey guys, Maddie here. I thought today we would go through and talk about why winter camping actually kind of sucks. Now, some of the things we're going to talk about today may not affect you depending on what part of the world you're living in and what kind of climate you deal with when it gets to winter temperatures. But for me, these are some of the reasons why winter camping trips and winter backpacking trips can absolutely turn into type two fun, which is the kind of fun that is absolutely miserable when you're going through it and it only kind of really becomes fun when you get home and you start thinking about the trip after the fact. But like I said, when you're going through it, these conditions and situations actually really suck. Before we dive into the reasons why winter camping, winter backpacking kind of suck, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and you're into backpacking and hiking and looking for some backpacking tips and maybe some ways to shave weight off your back and get yourself more comfortable out on trail, because that is what my channel is all about. I love being comfortable on trail and just being more functional out on trail. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing to the channel. The first reason that we're going to dive into is something that we deal with up here in my neck of the woods here in northern Alberta over in western Canada and that is the extreme cold. I don't have the ability to plan my trips the very next day so I tend to plan my trips ahead of time usually at least a couple weeks ahead of time. The catch with this is the weather window doesn't always pan out. You do get lucky from time to time, you know, you get on a backpacking trip or you're only dealing with like minus 10 Celsius. So, you know, that to me, that's like the ideal temperature to get out on a backpacking trip. But as does happen when we get these ridiculous cold snaps here in Western Canada, you plan a trip and a couple weeks down the road, you hit a cold snap and all of a sudden you're dealing with temperatures in the negative 30s. Now, this isn't just overnight temperatures. You deal with minus 30 all day long. And if you guys have never dealt with those kind of temperatures, I can tell you it's absolutely miserable. There's not really a whole lot you can do besides just keep yourself moving to try to keep yourself warm, which is why I don't tend to go on a lot of backpacking trips when it's going to get that cold. But uh, sometimes, you know, that itch just gets you and you still head out and you just deal with being absolutely miserable the entire time you're out there. Second thing we're gonna talk about that makes backpacking trips in the winter absolutely suck is condensation. When it comes to winter camping trips, it's pretty much unavoidable. You know, you've got moisture in your breath and you know, you seal off your tent because you know, you wanna try and hold as much heat inside as you can and getting condensation on your tent walls and getting condensation on your top quilt or your sleeping bag over top of your chest, it is absolutely unavoidable. It's gonna happen to you. All you can really do and all I really do is I just kind of deal with it as it happens. You know, I keep a pack towel with me. Sometimes I'll bring two or three with me out on a winter camping trip. This is Wanda's pack towel that I carry for her on our summer backpacking trips. But in the winter time, this comes with me every single trip. Uh, depending on how long I'm going to go for, I'll bring a couple of them. But what I do to kind of manage condensation and to try and limit the condensation inside my shelter is every single time that I wake up, say, you know, you just wake up getting a sore spot in your shoulder or you wake up to have to pee, I will take the time and I will wipe every little droplet of condensation off from the shelter walls, be it my tarp in my hammock or if I'm sleeping on the ground in my tent. Uh, what that's going to do is it's just going to limit the amount of condensation that is going to build up. I mean, yes, when you go back to sleep and you start breathing again, more condensation is going to build up. But taking the time to wipe it down in the middle of the night is going to help cut down on sort of the buildup of condensation. And don't forget to wipe condensation off of the outer shell of your top quilt or your sleeping bag as well. For me, that tends to build up. Uh, I think part of, the, part of it is just kind of the way I sleep. You know, even when I'm in my hammock, you know, I just kind of tend to snuggle up there and, you know, you just you breathe out your nose and I've, I've tried lots of different things. You know, I, I wear like a neck buff over my face. It's just kind of one of those things that you deal with. You know, you'll get a little layer of frost or, you know, some wet condensation. I just do what I can to wipe that off to stop that from soaking through the top layer and kind of getting my top insulation wet, which happens from time to time and it sucks. But, you know, condensation is a thing. We got to deal with it. The third issue that we're going to talk about is deep snow. That's kind of one of the primary reasons that I always hike with other people in the wintertime. Safety reasons, obviously, but for helping break trail, you know, having two or three people that can just kind of switch up places and, you know, you, you break trail for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you switch up with somebody else and, you know, you're not just the one who's constantly bagged and fatigued and you guys can all enjoy the suck together. And deep snow becomes an issue as well when you get to camp and you're setting up your camp because, you know, in, in winter conditions, if you're going to do some hot tenting, you've got to dig down through the snow and you've got to get down to the ground. 
And if you don't, all that happens is once you start running your stove, you get a massive pool of water inside your shelter. When we have Bo's teepee out, it can be a big chore to clear out the space for the teepee when you've got two to three feet of snow and the snow has kind of sat there and it gets pretty packed down and it gets pretty tiring and it, it takes quite a bit of time to clear out that kind of snow. So deep snow can be a massive issue when it comes to winter camping. Fourth one we're gonna talk about has to do with sweat management. Now when it comes to winter camping and winter backpacking, sweating is a massive concern. Dressing in layers is kind of one of the biggest ways to you know, mitigate your chances of sweating. If you sweat, it's almost impossible to dry yourself off because it's just, it's way too cold to just, you know, open up your jacket and just let that cold air rush in. It's really, really easy to get into a hypothermic state. And this can really limit the distances that you can travel. Sweat is a big issue. Uh, it really, really quickly leads to people going into hypothermia. And that's how people get into a lot of trouble when it comes to winter camping. The fifth reason why winter camping kind of sucks is the lack of sunlight. Now, this can vary depending on what part of the world you live in. For us up here in northern Alberta, we tend to lose the sun at about 3 to 4 o'clock. The sun starts to dip down. So you're dealing with very, very limited hours of sunlight. And when it comes to doing camp chores and, you know, gathering wood, like I previously mentioned, clearing out snow for where your shelter is going to be. And then the time it's going to take you to travel to that camp location. We try to plan our trips in the wintertime for about 5 to 10 kilometers maximum for distance traveled. That is also taking into account the lack of sunlight and, you know, just the amount of time it's going to take us to gather up a big pile of wood, you know, to have a fire going at night and clearing snow like we previously mentioned for our shelter systems and also setting up your shelter. Now, even if you're not going to clear out snow, like for me, I sleep in a hammock, so I don't necessarily have to clear all the snow out from underneath my shelter. What I do is I pack all the snow down. Usually I'll have my snowshoes on and I'll just go and stomp the ground out around my hammock, sort of, you know, like where my tarp is going to cover. And then I'll let that sit for about 30 to 45 minutes to kind of let that snow harden up and then I'll go set up my shelter. And the reason that I do that is it makes setting snow stakes and dead man anchors a lot easier when the snow is kind of hard packed down. You're not dealing with this like loose, fluffy snow. It just adds another step and takes a little bit more time to getting your shelter set up. And doing this in the dark absolutely sucks. So, you know, just dealing with the limited sunlight becomes an issue and it's just something to really take into consideration. And if you don't take it into enough consideration, you can end up at camp setting your shelter up in the dark, trying to gather wood in the dark. And when you're doing that in, you know, 20 below or negative 30 at times, that is 0% fun. Now, as I'm rambling on and talking about the reasons why winter camping sucks and, you know, obviously it, it doesn't always suck. You know, there's there's a lot of bonuses to winter camping. Um, I, I do it. So, you know, I, I wouldn't go and do it if it just completely sucked. And there are things that you guys can do to help make your winter camping and winter backpacking trips better and what i've got is an entire playlist of winter camping tips and i'll fire that right here for you guys if you have not already checked it out i suggest doing that and as always i'm maddie thank you so dang much for watching and i'll see you on the next one